Okay, so we've installed SharePoint prerequisites and we've actually already installed SharePoint server. So what we're going to do now is run the products and configuration wizard. Um, if you can't find it on your start menu, just type in the term SharePoint and it'll be the third one down with a gear and a magic wand. So click that and you're going to see the welcome to configure it. You're going to say yes to stop services. And then it should crank right up. So this has 10 tasks. Since we're doing a standalone, there is a known issue that um, I've run into on a couple of installations. And whenever we get to that, it's going to be around step eight. And it's going to give you um, an error that says the SDDL uh, contains an invalid uh, SID or a SID that cannot be translated. Um, Rahul Rashu from the uh, social forums on TechNet found this solution so I wanted to give him credit for that and I'll put a link to this in the video description but if we run through these steps that he outlines here on this article um, you, it solves a problem you'll want to just search for this on um, on Google if you can't if you can't follow it follow along uh, with this video so we'll let that run until we get that error and then um, I'll start the video up and we'll show you how to fix it okay so as I was saying there's an issue with the configuration wizard and um, basically all you have to do is uh, create uh, or ah, okay <laughs> you just have to do what's in this article so you're going to open a PowerShell command for SharePoint close this out and open PowerShell make sure you run it as administrator and there you go so you're going to type in dollar sign search service equal get sp oops sorry get credential and then flag domain i'm sorry i'm losing track of my mind here Instead of domain, use computer name, SP administrator. And what this does is anytime you see a dollar sign in PowerShell or a PowerShell command, you are referencing a variable or creating a variable and setting a value to it. This is basically saying get the credential for SP administrator and store it under the search service variable. So we'll hit enter, put in the password for that account. And that's all you have to do there. Um, then you're going to execute the command new SP managed account dash credential search service. So we're going to say create a new SP managed account. And then for the credential flag, we're going to use the dollar sign search service. So we're creating a new managed account under the credentials of search service, which are stored in the variable there. So that'll tell us the uh, credential it created and the password terms. It's not automatic renewal and it expires at this date and time. So that's all you have to do in PowerShell. And then you're going to go into the virtual machine and go to C program files and Microsoft Office servers 15.0 and then data office server. And you're going to look for the analytics folder with the GUID after it and go to properties sharing advanced sharing check the box for share this folder and go to permissions and then add the search service account we created earlier which would be um, sp administrator check the name click ok give that full permission and then you're going to also add permissions for the group wss underscore admin underscore wpg Check the name, click OK, and grant that account full control as well. Click Apply, OK, Apply, OK, and Close. Close this out. And then we just run the configuration in Wizard again. Thanks to Rahul Rashu for that uh, solution because that really cleared up a lot of issues I was having. So we'll run the product configuration wizard again. 
and this should fly right through the steps it already did, which were, I think it goes all the way straight through to step five. And it'll run through and uh, make sure it's created everything previously. And then it should run right through to step 10. So once that's done, we'll come back to the video. All right, so the configuration is now successful once we've run that um, the PowerShell commands and enabled the permissions. So click on Finish. And what it should do is come up and tell you, uh, should pop up an Internet Explorer and, and tell you to create a SharePoint site. You'll notice that uh, HTTP schwack schwack SP schwack is your URL for SharePoint. So that's for the site you're about to create with this. And then I'll also point you to this little awesome thing here, SharePoint Central Administration. You'll want to click that and get your central administration uh, port number. So you'll log in with your administrator account, which is SP admin. It's and it's Traitor. And click OK. 5986 uh, is the port number for central administration. That is randomized. Um, and it looks like it's still being initialized. But um, I will recommend that if you're ever doing this in a production environment or you are running it um, under a complete installation rather than standalone, You'll get the option to specify a port for central administration. And one of the things that I always do is I set that port to a set number. So for instance, if my central administration is 10,001, um, if I set it to that on any server I put it on or any farm I create, I'll set it to 10,001 because I know that's the central administration port. It's just a little tip I use. So here's our SP site. Um, template picker. You're going to pick whichever um, type of site you want to create. I always do team site. Um, with server, you can do an enterprise site and you can also do a publishing site. But that's really all you have to do there. Just pick a template. Just do team site for simplicity's sake. Click OK. And it'll tell you that it's going to work on it. That's one of the biggest fibs in all of SharePoint um, existence is that it can take somewhere. It'll t sometimes it'll take five seconds. Sometimes it'll take five minutes. But this will take a little bit of time because it's actually um, setting everything up and compiling the website. And we should also be able to get to our central administration URL at this point, too. Open it from the start menu. So 5986 will be mine. Yours will be different than this because it's a randomized port. It's still not pulling it up, but that's where it'll be. You can just go to your start menu and type central, and it'll pull it up. Okay, so once it's done working on it, you'll be asked to set up people in groups. And I would just leave this as used as an existing group. Um, and these are the three permission levels. Owners have full control, members have um, contribute access, and then visitors have read only. And if you need more information on the permission levels, be sure to check out my end user curriculum and the permissions tab. That'll explain all of those levels out to you. So again, it's going to work on it and it's going to basically build the demo site that we're creating. And if, if you're not able to get to central administration like I am right now, you might have to go in and do something. This, as you can see, it's not pulling this up. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go into Internet Information Services. And you'll open the sites and then look at the sites you have under your under the sites folder. Default website is the one that comes automatically with Internet Information Services. That one should always be stopped or have a question mark underneath it. SharePoint 80 is the site we're building under home. And then central administration is obviously what's not coming up right now. So right click that, manage website and start. That's weird. Let's go to the bindings, 5986. That's very weird, I've never seen that before. So 
so we'll just change this to 5987. And we'll start it. There we go. So we'll close this out. And here we'll go to SP colon 5987. You probably won't have to do that. There's probably just something jacked up in my installation. But if we go back to our home page here, you'll see that this is our SharePoint site. And right now, the only user that has access to it is the um, administrator account. But you can use this site to create and set up all of your um, all of your testing, all of your, uh, you know, if you're, if you're following the course or you have some users that you want to follow the course and you want to give them access to a site of their own, feel free to set it up here. But this basically walks you through everything. Now, there are some settings and things that you won't be able to access at this point. Um, for instance, the news feed, SkyDrive, and sites won't be accessible until those are set up. But you can then go in here and basically change the site look and you know add some colors and themes and all that stuff but that's all you need to worry about on there and then for central administration it's finally up and, and awake and this is where you'll manage all of the settings and things in here if you have your virtual machine running on your pc and you're on your host machine you can type in the url for sharepoint which would be http colon schwack schwack SP in our case, whatever you named your PC and hit enter, and it will take you right to that page. So you can work within your um, browser as a, you know, with a full sized, um, with a full size browser and not have to worry about all the other stuff. So just a little tidbit of information. Um, also, <clears throat> you can, you should be able to utilize remote um, to access your machine via remote desktop. You'll want to go into Hyper-V, and you'll want to enable remote access on there. So uh, open your machine in Hyper-V, go to Administrator, put in your password, and go to your computer, and go to the Properties, your Remote Settings, and then make sure you allow remote connections to this computer. Once you do that, then you should be able to open Remote Desktop. Type in the computer name, put in your password, and you can remote right in and work on it as though it were right here. So quick and dirty way to set up uh, to set up remote desktop and be able to get to your virtual servers without having to be confined to this tiny little window. So just wanted to add that in there for you guys. Thanks.